everybody, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. My name is Shahrazad and I'm here with my very dear friend, um, Chanpreet Singh, who is an incredible artist and has just released today his first debut book, which is a very beautiful collection of poetry. So we're very excited to be here today to discuss a little bit with him what it is all about. So um, we'd just like to thank uh, Justine, who's here today with the rest of the team, uh, managing the event as well as Stage One Studios for hosting us and Dilki Awaz for the media coverage of today. So um, I think we can all agree that we are living in unprecedented times, at least in most of our lifetimes, I'm sure. And uh, this is a very tumultuous world where we are being challenged and tested in so many ways. And so I feel personally so grateful that something, however tiny, has been contributed into our world today, which is just a little piece of something that can make us smile and look back, introspect, and just... Um, be with ourselves a little bit in, in peace, perhaps, in, in this very uh, unprecedented time. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Chanpreet Singh. Um, Thank you, you Sanjana. I, I feel great. And uh, namaste to everybody. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Sanjana, for uh, such a pleasant uh, introduction. Um, you know, first of all, I want to thank uh, Stage One Studios for uh, allowing us to host uh, an event at this time. Uh, I want to thank Jasmine for managing this event uh, and uh, Dilki Awaz for providing the media coverage. And a special thanks to you for, you know, really having this conversation with me today. Uh, I think it makes it extra special for me because um, I think you were somewhere part of that journey when I start, restarted writing uh, these poems. Um, if you remember, we were in a play together where um, this, this all, you know, started again. So, and, you know, I've had a chance to see you and work closely with you. Uh, you are an incredible artist yourself, and I've learned so much from you. So, uh, you know, it couldn't have been better that somebody like you is talking to me today on this very important day uh, in my life. Thank you so much, Chan. Wow. You, um, and uh, I just, I know that... Uh, as a, a person, but also as an artist, I think um, having read your incredible book, I do see that uh, it is very much apparent how much you hold your loved ones and your circles and, and your sort of protective infrastructure close. Um, and, I, and I loved uh, those specific poems um, uh, where, wherein even uh, your mother actually gave a beautiful introductory poem and introduction in the book. Um, so I, I, I see that and it's just, it's so beautiful. I'm glad that we're starting the event in that way too. But um, how do you feel today, Chan? I, I'm over the moon. Um, I never thought that I will be part of a book launch uh, of a book that I've written myself. Uh, you know, I've attended other book launch uh, events, but I've always, you know, admired everybody who's on the other side of the table uh, and I think today is special in, in many respects that, um, you know, everybody who's here today, I think everybody has had, uh, you know, a role to play uh, in the journey that I've had so far. Uh, they've directly or indirectly contributed to the content of this book. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned about this in, in the foreword of the book as well, that hamare aspas ke jo log hote hain, unka jo... Uh, support hota hai. I think uh, uh, it makes a big difference on who you become. It makes a big difference in building your confidence. Uh, a lot of times you have self-doubts and, you know, I think uh, every artist uh, has self-doubts about their own craft. So I think some, um, you know, feedback uh, and honest feedback, encouragement from your friends, family, people who care about you, I think makes a big difference in uh, you know, taking things forward. Absolutely, and you feel that from your work completely. All those souls, uh, many of whom became actual poem. Um, so, uh, but before we get into that, I want, uh, Chan, what are you expecting from your readers and what can they expect from you? 
what can they expect from your work? Uh, my expectation from the readers uh, isn't uh, too complicated. I have a very simple expectation from anybody who picks up this book um, is, um, uh, you know, I'm requesting the reader to come and journey with me on some of these questions that I've explored, uh, talking about some important uh, issues that impact us today and is going to impact uh, generations to come. Um, so my hope is that a reader, when they pick up the book and uh, uh, read those poems, uh, you know, it helps them to, um, uh, you know, trigger their own thought process. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's the simple expectation that I have from the reader. I mean, it's not a very complicated book. It's a collection of poems, uh, which, you know, touch upon different emotions. So, um, you know, if a reader uh, is, uh, you know, sitting on their patio, having a cup of coffee, this book could be a good company. What were you imagining would happen with these poems? Were you imagining that, somebody with a cup of coffee? Or were you, I mean, were you imagining it even to become a book? Or were a lot of these poems just written uh, just from some need to write? So great question. So I did not start writing these poems with a book in mind. Um, and so, you know, they say that life comes back full circle. So. I used to write in middle school. So, us time, when I was writing, there were two teachers. There was one teacher who I remember vividly. I remember her, uh, Mrs. P. Jane. She, um, you know, would always encourage me that, uh, "Hey, uh, why don't you write more?" And uh, that actually gave me a lot of confidence at that time. So, I used to write pretty frequently at that time. And us time. Uh, Times of India ka ek akhbar aaya karta tha uh, called Newspaper and Education and, uh, wo, and that used to get distributed only in schools. Us samay, us akhbar mein meri do kavitaen chapi thi. To, and for me as a kid, uh, getting an opportunity to be published in a newspaper was a very big deal. So I was over the moon and I think that gave me some confidence that, you know, main likh sakta hoon. But then, you know, uh, with time, um, other priorities take over. You know, I was into sport and, you know, uh, I used to spend a lot of time doing that. So then I stopped writing. Um, but then, uh, I'm sure you would remember this. Two uh, years ago, I think, two years ago, we played a play, The Parting. And, you know, that how, what such a big difference that play uh, made in our lives. Uh, just the uh, intensity of the emotion and the purity of the stories in that play um, I think somewhere it triggered me to write a poem, uh, which was, uh, which is called Anantar. And it talks about the importance of, uh, remembering our history. Um, so Womp Kavita Mene, Jo Sokat Log Aspas Te, Mene, in fact, uh, play ki sare, uh, cast ko sonai thi Kavita. To, logo ne bola hai, achi hai. So then the old memories are fresh and I thought that I should write it again. So then I wrote one, two, 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 three, three, four kavita. I reached a certain stage where I thought maybe now this can become a book. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, I was going to a lot of open mics. In fact, at the same studio, there was a music event regularly. I was reading my kavita there. A uh, sub-drift event in Oakland, mein hota hai, ja ke I've read my poems. And uh, the feedback was very encouraging. So that gave me the confidence that, you know, if there's, maybe there's an audience for this work. Uh, and then, you know, I thought I should probably put together a manuscript. I reached out to some publishers and I want to thank Writers Gram Publications for being kind enough to accept the manuscript. And uh, today we are sitting here, I'm holding the book in my hand. <laughs> what did your process look like? John, I mean, it sounds like uh, we're, I'm glad we're talking about your work as an amazing theater yes. artist and uh, spoken word, um, lots of performative spaces. So it sounds like there was a lot of interplay between your writing and that kind of work. Um, but take us into a day writing with you, if you can take us back to those formative stages when it was up in the air, will it be a book, would it not be? Uh, what did what did a day look like? Do you have any particular associ a memory associated with the making of one po poem? 
actually, so it's been very interesting. And uh, to this day, you know, the way the writing process works for me is, you know, it continues to evolve. Um, and, you know, I, whenever, I've, whenever I've read about poetry and the craft of writing, there are, you know, multiple schools of thought. So one school of thought, which actually works for a lot of people, people say that you should sit down and write every day. And I try and do that as well. I think it's very important to do that to improve your craft. Um, but rose bed ke likhne se aisa nahi hai ke maine rose bed ke kavita likh dali hai. For some reason, it doesn't work for me like that. Mere liye zaruri hai ki main jab bedu, to main kuch leke bedu. To kavita ban jati hai. And that basically comes from what you observe every day, uh, things that you think about every day, uh, whether it's about the places you visit, uh, the people you meet, the relationships you have, the memories you think about, the imagination that you have about the future uh, and the possibilities in it. Uh, and I mean, generally, I, I am a person who likes to wonder a lot. So if there is a dilchasp, um, विषय मुझे मिलता है तो मैं कहता हूं कि चलो अब बैठ के कुछ कोशिश करते हैं कविता लिखने की उसमें से ज्यादा करके मैं आई मीन आई फेल बट समटाइम्स अ डिसेंट पोएम इमर्जेस सो दैट्स आई थिंक दैट्स द राइटिंग प्रोसेस दैट आई हैव एंड आई हैव आई हैव यू नो द राइटिंग स्पेस फॉर मी मेक्स अ बिग डिफरेंस यू नो आई लाइक कॉफी शॉप्स तो एंड यू नो दिस राइट आई मीन एवरी डे आफ्टर वर्क और एवरी अदर डे आफ्टर वर्क यू विल फाइंड मी सिटिंग इन अ कॉफी शॉप close to where I live. Um, so I've written a lot of books in there. Some books have been written in the wine room. Uh, I know my parents are here, but I always drink uh, in moderation. I just wanted to put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very important. But uh, speaking of which, you just mentioned like observation. And I, I think that's so prominent in your book. And it really helps us as readers also do that. Just observe in silence and in peace a lot of uh, what is happening in our external world that we just gloss over, whether it be ik akela ped, just one tree, um, uh, a beautiful, uh, the beautiful relationship even between a brother and a sister in Titili, um, Sunday shenanigans, um, our own feeling of uh, malaise, procrastination, mediocrity. And, and spaces, um, observing uh, basic spaces like our childhood home, where every corner has a little secret, a little memory. Um, but speaking about uh, your writing process, uh, I wanted to ask you this burning question that I feel like we've talked about, but I'm just gonna keep asking you because I'm really fascinated how you do it. And I think a lot of people will be wondering as well, how do you do it, uh, Chan? You, you work a quote unquote day job, nine to five, I'm sure it's nine to nine most days, mm -hmm. and you're amazing at it. And then is it, is it by day you're doing that, by night you're doing this, or is it really so black and white? Um, how do you balance it all? Does one enable the other? So great question. A lot of people actually at work have asked me this question. Uh, and I'm, I, I think some of the people from work have also joined. So. Hello, everyone. I think uh, <laughs> we're just going to talk in a little bit. So, you know, um, I, I like to believe, and I, I think this is true, um, that one part of your life always contributes to the other. Because the common baseline of those two parts of your life is you. Like if I'm going to work and I have some creativity, uh, you know, brewing inside me, I'm going to bring the creativity to work too. Now, I think uh, I've been very blessed that the place that I work, they've been very encouraging to invite that creativity in my work. So I've never felt that I've been restricted in the way I think. And so I'm very thankful to the place that I work at. I think my colleagues, my coworkers, uh, they're really smart people, but they've, they've, they've been very inviting of, you know, be trying to bring something if, if something is growing inside me. At the same time, you bring stuff from work to the roles that you play outside work. Like the role that I play to my family, to my friends, there, a lot of that is gets formed how I am at work. Like for example, if I face a challenge at work, 
the response to that challenge is going to come from my attitude which is the same attitude that, that i can carry when i'm dealing with another challenge outside work so all of that i think encroaches upon each other and contributes to you becoming a better human being and in turn becoming a better writer mm. uh, i think i have started acknowledging that a lot more which has really helped me uh, um you know write frequently wow yeah it's very apparent that um your uh, sort of perhaps like your your many versions of self and the various spaces that you occupy on a daily basis um there there's a there's a flow in the book um and it's very natural it's it's very organic and as it sounds your process was as well um i wanted to talk a little bit about the causes that you speak about in the book whether it be environmentalism writing about issues of gender in south asia um did writing about these very um time sensitive and urgent issues uh today did that come naturally to you or was that something that you felt like no i have to i should write about something uh either political or or societal etc um so very interesting question um let me answer the second part of the question first when it comes to these causes whether it's climate change whether it's um patriarchy in our society uh violence towards women all of these things i don't think are political issues they are issues and they are policy issues we politicize them um so when i when i when i write about a cause which is close to me so first of all i should uh i should find uh i should have a aspiration for that cause otherwise it's it's not genuine so anything that i write about i mean I, i i believe it's been authentic to me uh, i'm sure when the reader looks at that poem they can think otherwise um but i've i've not written that i want to prove something to anybody main kisi ko sabit karne ke liye kavita nahi likh raha hu main apne aap se ye sawal puchne ke liye kavita likh raha hu ki ye agar vishay mere liye mahatvapurna hai to mere iski taraf you know uh, what is my perspective towards it so uh, that's been the objective of writing these poems now if this can um encourage others to think about uh that cause in question i will feel myself to be very lucky what about writing uh about these issues but also just uh, writing about what you write about uh, little things little moments many things feeling i mean personally to me i felt like they were just so essentially south asian in nature but also very universal but things like um the chai maker man um uh and and these kinds of things so many examples in the book um what was it like writing about these things here in the usa um and just was there a feeling of like reclaiming something perhaps that's that's in another uh, that's in another land so um i think and maybe i think subconsciously that has been at play a little bit that when you i think you are when you're away from your home i grew up in delhi and that's my first home now this has become my second home but when you're away from home you try and do things which remind you of it so i think hindi is one language which does that for me so so main hindi mein kavita likh raha hu but main hindi ke alawa english mein bhi i write english poems too it's a matter of uh, a coincidence that the hindi book for the the hindi poems were formed into a manuscript first i'm working on something in parallel for english poems but i have a long way to go still uh but i think those are the two things and those are the languages i know i know hindi english punjabi those are the languages i know so i have no other medium to write in so i i i guess that's what's contributed to uh, you know writing something in hindi you know uh chan when i read you i genuinely realized that i love poetry and i feel like that's going to be many people's response uh when they pick up your book 
But this is such a fast paced, uh, time pressed world. And um, what's your feeling on that? Um, I mean, I know I gave my two cents about it, but um, what's your stance on, on poetry uh, today? Because I know we've spoken about this too, that poetry is seen as a really elitist thing for people who have the luxury of time. Um, but what's your stance on that? I think poetry exists in different spheres of life. We just don't realize it. You know, and there's a lot of arts for commerce that we see. Like when you see an ad commercial, you see a jingle. That is a form of poetry, technically, right? And we we sing along those jingles quite frequently. We talk about songs, like songs without the music is poetry, right? And everybody loves music. Like almost everybody like likes different kinds of songs. So they are um, subconsciously liking poetry. So therefore, you know, when people say that it's an elitist thing, maybe they're talking about literature, but literature is, doesn't belong to anybody. If you're interested in li literature, pick up a book and read it. It belongs to you and you make something out of it. Right? So, uh, uh, and I think the other thing that poetry does, and you know, that's my personal view. I think poetry has this ability to slow us down. It's just the nature of this art form that like, for example, when you look at a page, a kavita shuru hoti, a kavita page panne ke aakhir tak nahi jati, jaise prose jata hai. Wo kahi beech mein ruk jati hai aur kehti hai, come back, niche aake dekho, uh, aur kya hai. So it's basically um, slowing you down in your pace of reading and slowing you down in your pace of thinking which I think in today's day and age is so important that when we have time, what do we do? We take phone and take a look at it. And I'm also equally guilty of it. We watch TV, we take a phone, we take a phone, we talk with a friend. We don't sit down. I think that sitting down is necessary. We probably come from there and we don't have a new thought. It's funny because I know you say that you're guilty of it, um, of, of turning to your phone and, and just be participating in that whole culture. Um, but honestly, Chan, I feel like I know you as such a, and I'm sure many people feel really know you. Um, you're such a, a gentle soul, really, for, for most people like myself who know you. And um, uh, there's just a sense of peace and calm. But what I would like to know, and I'm sure what a lot of your readers would want to know is, who are you? How would you describe yourself? Can you tell us a little bit about the Chanpreet Singh who's behind Ik Akela Paid, whose thoughts and, and feelings became the book? I'm looking for this question, so I'm looking for myself. And I'm sure everybody somewhere is asking that existential question that who are you? You know, why do you exist? What's your purpose? I think about those things as well. Um, personally, I'm a very aspirational person. Um, so, you know, if I, and I, I, I don't discount myself. I always tell myself that if I decide to do something, I will make that happen. Now I fail 99% of the time, but I have with time told myself that what is the worst that could happen, right? Uh, so I think that's how, uh, I think that mindset, I think somewhere also reflects in my voice. Uh, and I've been told this by some of the close people who've read my work that your, your voice reflects who you are. And I think that happens uh, with a lot of writers when they find their voice in a way, when you read their work, they are, you are essentially talking to them. I have a long way to go. This is just my first book. But I think that when I have a lot of people who have read my work, I think it's a good Okay, let's hear your voice. Can you read to us, Janpreet? Can you read to us um, a poem sure. from your book? Sure. Um, maybe I'll read the uh, poem, which is the uh, title of the book, Ek Akela Peer. Is it your favorite? It is my favorite. Uh, and I, it, it, there's a lot of thought which went into uh, uh, giving this the title and which I'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, you know, I'll quickly read the first poem here. So Kavita ka shirshak hai, uh, Ek Akela Peer. एक अकेला पेड़ हूँ भूमि तल पर खड़ा हुआ फल ठहनी सब हरना चाहें रहता अक्सर डरा हुआ थे कभी आकाश में बादल 
वायुमंडल कुछ भरा हुआ अब तो केवल तपता सूरज तापमान भी बड़ा हुआ मेरे कंधे भी चहके पक्षी मुकुट घोसलों से सजा हुआ साल दर साल बढ़ती नस्लें जीवन जीवन से रजा हुआ एक अकेला पेड़ हूं जाने कब तक खड़ा हुआ सोचूं अब तो प्राण त्याग दू जाने की सुमीद अड़ा हुआ धन्यवाद वाह Thank you so much for reading that, Chan. We could go on uh, and just discussing this poem. I know you wanted to say something about the title as well. So beautiful, um, just the imagery of of Eka Kela Pet, which made it to your cover as well, and is the first opening uh, poem of the book. Did you want to um, speak on that? And then I think also we'll get some reactions and do some Q and A from our audience as well. So have your questions ready. So, एक अकेला पेड़ एक तो दैट कॉज इज वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट दूसरा मुझे लगता है एक अकेला पेड़ कहीं ना कहीं उस एंटिटी को भी दर्शाता है जो समाज में इग्नोर कही गई है या जो समाज में लताड़ी गई है तो मुझे लगा कि ये किताब का टाइटल होना चाहिए सो दैट वॉज द थॉट प्रोसेस बिहाइंड द टाइटल ऑफ द बुक ब्यूटिफुल Couldn't be a better time for that. 